Well, children, it's nearly Christmas Day and you've heard the first instalment of Christmas, the Christmas Eve part of the Winston story from Mrs. Jarvis. And here I am to read you the final little bit. So let's get started. This is called Home. Christmas Day that year was very loud and an exciting affair. Winston, his mum and his siblings nattered all night in the warmth of Winston's dull house home. They chattered and laughed and sang and really had the most wonderful time. When Oliver came running down the stairs the next morning, he couldn't believe his eyes. Winston, he cried, you're home. You said you'd come back, you promised and you did. And you've, you've brought friends. Winston squeaked with delight as he introduced his human family to his mouse family. He very proudly took one of Oliver's fingers and pulled him over to shake paws with each of his brothers and sisters and finally with his mum. The giddiness and excitement was overwhelming and Oliver's parents had to take themselves into the kitchen for a hot cup of tea to give their ears a rest. But the excitement and surprises didn't finish there. Despite the shop being closed for the day, the front doorbell didn't stop jangling. Oliver watched in amazement as visitor after visitor arrived, each more extra extraordinary than the next. First came the exquisitely fluffy white cat wearing his most enormous diamond collar anyone had ever seen. On her back was a rat, resplendent in velvet, and his hat tilted rackishly on his head. Next there came a large pigeon and an almost completely spherical robin who seemed to be only half awake. An elderly bat then arrived and they all hoped, hopped merrily into the shop and joined the party in the window. Then later, came an astounding appearance that made Oliver rub his eyes to make sure he really was seeing what was in front of him. Just after breakfast, a light lilac poodle trotted into the shop. At some point recently, it had obviously been a very well-trimmed, clipped and pampered pooch, but now he was looking utterly windswept and thoroughly pleased with him about, what to, about that too. He had with him a large collection of mice who paraded into the toy shop carrying an array of delicious smelling baked goods in his paws. But all the bakeries are closed today, muttered Oliver's mum from the doorstep. And just as everyone was about to settle down for the delicious Christmas feast, the doorbell went again. On the doorstep, where was sitting very neatly, was a fox. On his head was a rat wrapped in a beautiful shawl. Behind them was a rather tired looking owl with a string of popcorn round her neck. She was wearing a Christmas decoration on her head and appeared to be delighted by the smell of food wafting from the kitchen. But bedtime, by bedtime, Oliver was completely bamboozled by it all. He had to have his bedtime story downstairs in the shop as there was no room on his bed for all the new arrivals to join him there. As he took himself back up to his attic bedroom, Oliver's mind was tri tripping giddily over itself with questions. Where had Winston been? Who were these visitors and where did they come from? Had the extraordinary events of the day been real? Downstairs, Winston was also marvelling at everything. Here was his family all together under one roof, the ones who looked like him and the ones who didn't, but who were family all the same. He loved each and every one of them and they loved him. And it was then he realised that the strange aching feeling in his chest, the empty one that felt like the missing jigsaw piece had vanished and in its place was something new. It was a happy, full and warm loving feeling that felt like a hug, the hug his mum had given him outside in the snow. Winston knew then that this new feeling would stay with him always. And if Oliver had peeked out of his window at midnight, he would have seen the tiny reindeer, its first shimmering like starlight, pay a flying visit to the shop. He would have wondered again if his eyes were playing tricks on him, but they wouldn't have been. The reindeer were really there, dancing and falling and in the falling snow with Winston and his family. Because that's the thing about Christmas. The thing you must always remember. Magic fizzes in the air and very strange and wonderful things happen, really can and do happen, even if you're a mouse. The end. That's it, Clock House. Have a fantastic Christmas from us all. Be good. I hope Santa's very kind to you, and we look forward to seeing you and hearing all about your Christmases very soon. Merry Christmas, everybody.